Dr. Buffington, and today we are going to be looking at fractions that have variables in them, and we're converting or we're talking about two things that are really challenging. People, a lot of people don't like fractions, and a lot of people don't like variables. So hopefully, I can explain this in a gentle way that will be pretty understandable. Um, remember what equivalent fractions are. Equivalent fractions are fractions that are the same exact, they mean the same thing, they're just written in a different way. Like 2 thirds is equal to 4 over 6. Now, when we get that with a variable on top, it's going to change things up because 1 third is equal to some number over 9. And we're not told what that number is. And that's our job is to figure out what is that number. So let's go ahead and look at two different ways that we can um, solve this type of question. There are several different ways. Um, I'm going to focus on two, the two that I would use the most. Um, the way, method number one, I don't know that it has an official name, but I call it what happened. Um, basically, I try and look at the, the variables where, or the numbers, I'm sorry, where I actually can see what happened. And what happened, you have to use multiplication or division. Um, but what happened to 3 that made it into 9? Well, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So I know that I need to multiply the top times the same number. 1 times 3 is 3. So what I end up with is 3 over 9. Or in other words, x is equal to 3. So that's kind of how the what happened method you look at the two that you have the numbers for, say 3 times 3 is 9, OK, then I have to multiply the top times 3 as well. Because in fractions, remember, you're always multiplying the top and bottom times the same number. All right, that keeps it a nice equivalent fraction. So let's look at um, practicing this method here a little bit. Um, we, with this one, we have 4, or 3 over 4 is what over 16? Again, we look at what happened. What did I do to 4 to make it into 16? I know that 4 times 4 is 16. So I have to multiply the top times 4 and the bottom times 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. So my fraction is 12 over 16. In other words, x is equal to 12. And that's how we would solve for the variable using this, what I call what happened method. Just looking at what happened. Now, the trick to this is you have to know your multiplication tables pretty well. And in some cases, it won't work. But I'll show you some examples of how to solve it using a different method. This method, cross multiplying, is a method that we're going to use quite a bit in the future. And that is that you basically take the numbers that are across from each other and you multiply them. So 1 times 9 is 9, and 3 times x is 3x. All right? Seems pretty simple. You take the number on the bottom, multiply it. 9 times 1, 9. 3 times x, 3x. And then you solve for the variable of x. And we've talked about how to do that. This means 3 times x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. x is equal to 3. Now, in the previous method, we looked at this and said 3 times 3 is 9, 1 times 3 is 3. And we solved, oh, x is equal to 3. Same thing. This one here will get the same exact answer. It's just that we take a little bit more time by doing that cross multiplying. Let's do another one using cross multiplying. This one here is a perfect example of one we would use cross multiplying because you can't say, what happened to 8 that made it to 10? Right? 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 divided by wouldn't work. So we can't really just say, what happened to 8 that made it into 10? So we would use cross multiplying, where we would do 8 times x is 8x, and 10 times 4 is 40. All right? Divide both sides by 8. These ones cancel out, and we're left with 40 divided by 8 is 5, and 5 would be equal to x. Now, could you have said 4 over 8 is 1 half, and so 5 over 10 would be half? Yeah, if you can look at that and make that connection right away, you can do that. But using the cross-multiplying method, 
we're able to multiply across and solve. All right. Now, there's a couple of shortcuts that you can use with this. And I like to show you the shortcuts because oftentimes, if you look at this, this is like, oh, OK, well, I have to multiply both of them. Then I have to solve for my variable. It seems like more steps. Um, one shortcut is that you look for the numbers that are across from each other. So in this case, I know that the numbers 4 and 10 are across from each other. See that? I, I, X and 8 are across from each other, but those aren't the numbers. You find the numbers that are across from each other, and those ones you multiply. All right. No matter where the X is located, no matter where the other thing is located, you find the numbers that are across from each other, multiply them. So in this case, I would have 4 times 10 is equal to 40. Okay. My second step then I'm going to show using a different color is then I take the result of that and I divide by whatever number I have left. Wow, that's not the best color for that. So I divide by 8, which gives me 40 divided by 8, which is 5. Notice that I have the same exact answer, 5, at the end only I didn't have to do quite so much. So this is kind of a partial, this is the cross multiplying method. It's just doing it kind of in one step. Look for the numbers that are across from each other and divide by whatever number is left and that'll give you your x value. All right, let's go ahead and take a look um, at when to use these methods. Method one, if it seems obvious to you what happened, you'd use the what happened method. Um, if you can figure it out pretty quickly, you can use that method. What did I do? multiply times the denominators? What did I multiply times the numerators? So you can use that method. If you want one consistent way to solve for all variable fractions, go ahead and use the cross multiplying. You'll never have to worry about looking for what's obvious. You'll never have to worry about checking to see if, if you can figure it out on your own. If you want one consistent method, use cross multiplying. It'll work every time. All right, and you don't have to use that shortcut that I showed you. If you figure out and work with doing cross multiplying, full cross multiplying every time, you'll just have one method. You'll always be able to solve for fractions. And that's nice sometimes to just have one method that you use that will always work. All right, so let's practice a little bit here. I'm going to show you both methods as we practice through these just um, so that you can get a little bit of practice using both. Um, 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. So if I divide both the top and bottom by 3, I would get that that is equal to through negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. And then over 27 divided by 3, which gives me 9. So therefore, I can say x is equal to negative 1. All right. That's using the what happened method, because I simply look at 27 and 9 and say, oh, I divided by 3 to get 9. Now, knowing our answer, I'm going to get rid of that, put our answer up here, and I'm going to solve now using cross multiplying. 9 times negative 3 will give me negative 27 is equal to 27x. I'll divide both sides by a positive 27. This one cancels out. 20, negative 27 divided by 27 gives me negative 1. So therefore, x is equal to negative 1. Again, same exact answer, two different methods. You could also have said, let's do it the, the shortcut kind of way that I showed you. And that would be 3, negative 3 times 9, because those are the two numbers that are across from each other, which gives us negative 27, divided by the remaining number which is what we did here. We did 20, 9 times 3 is 27, and we divided it by 27. So you're doing exactly the same thing. You're going to get the same answer. All right, let's do this one. See here what we've got. 16, 6 times 3 is equal to 18. And I look at the top number here and here and say, what happened? 6 times 3 is 18, so 27 will need to be multiplied times 3 to give me n. So I'm going to pull out my calculator. Unless I have the 23 or 27 times tables memorized, um, and probably say 27 times 3 is equal to 81. So it's 18 over 81. And therefore, n is equal to 81. OK? So that would be one method. 
the what happened method if you want to look at it and say, oh, I know how to get from 3 to 18. All right. Otherwise, we're going to do cross multiplying. And this one here may seem a little bit more complicated because we have to do 27 times 18, which gives us 400, holy cow, 86. And then we divide by the, the other remaining number, divided by 6, and it gives you 81. Uh, I forgot to write in there that we divided. Hold on. Divided by 6. And you'll get the same exact answer. Doing it that method, again, a bit of a shortcut, I think, 27 times 18. If I have my calculator, I'm not intimidated by large numbers. 27 times 18, and then I divide it by 6, it will give me my value for n. Or I can do the full cross multiplying, where I say 27 um, times 18. Again, I'm going to want my calculator out. And that will give me 486. And 6 times n gives me 6n. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So again, we're following the same exact steps. n is equal to 81. All right. And the hardest one yet here, we've got some negative numbers. We've got some crazy ones. But honestly, it's all it's all the same thing here. We're going to multiply 1 times negative 5 equals negative 5. So we can multiply both the top and the bottom times negative 5. 14 times negative 5 gives us negative 5 over 70, negative 70. All right? So A is equal to negative 70. All right, so again, the what happened method, if you're comfortable with multiplying negatives, you could solve that using the what happened method. Now, we're going to do cross multiplying. We're going to say 14 times negative 5, which gives us negative 70. And then we divide by our remaining number, which is 1. Negative 70 over 1 gives us negative 70. That'll be our final answer. All right, so again, whichever method you prefer, you can use. You'll get the same exact answer. Now, for the future, um, I'm just looking forward here, and I see some things that, that may give us a little bit of trouble, so I wanted to make you aware that, again, you're not always going to be able to say what happened. What do I multiply six times to get me five? I can't really do that um, nicely. So. Again, with, when you get a situation like that, I would do cross multiplying. 6 times a is 6a, 15 times 5. And you can even write it out if you want. Okay, There's a times 6, 6a, 15 times 5, 15 times 5. All right, now I'm going to, so I probably should have been doing that to kind of show all the work all the way along, but I don't think that's completely necessary. 15 times 5 is 75. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And then I get 75 over 6. Those two cancel out. A is equal to 75 over 6. Now 75 divided by 6 does not give me a pretty number. I could write it in a fraction. I could write it in a mixed number. But sometime in the future, you're going to get answers where they just look like this. This is uh, reduced to lowest terms, and the mixed number is 12 and a half. I mean, so again, this is looking to the future here. That if you, if you get really comfortable with the what happened method and you're just multiplying straight across or dividing straight across, that's fine. But in the future, you will definitely need to be familiar with the cross multiplying method because you're going to get ones that look like this. So while you don't need to know this for today's lesson or you know for solving simple equivalent fractions, um, you will need to know how to use the cross multiplying method at some point in the future. So just a note for the future. Um, for now, you don't have to remember this. You don't have to remember all the steps. You certainly don't know, need to know how to convert from a mixed number into, or a, an improper fraction into a mixed number, but just something for the future. Other than that, just remember our two methods and why you would use each one, and you'll be in good shape for converting fractions when you've got a variable.